Hi guys! Welcome again to my channel. It's me, Cheryl, your vlogger. Usap lang tayo saglit. Um, I just wanna show you some, um, or give you some ideas on how it is here to Canada. So, I'm gonna be doing this video in two parts. In one, I'm gonna explain kung paano makarating dito. Um, there's a lot of ways, pero I'm just gonna focus on the things na yung ways para makapag-settle ka here and eventually maging permanent resident ka or like you know Canadian citizen okay and then number two is like what's gonna be the expectation when you come here to Canada um so without further ado let's start so magsimula na tayo so I'm gonna go to the first part of my video which is how to get here to Canada now, I just want to let you guys know na maraming ways to get here to Canada. You can be a tourist, you can be a refugee, pero mapofocus lang ako dun sa mga common na ginagawa ng mga tao and just like a faster or like um, most effective way para maging permanent resident ka to Canadian citizen. Okay? And disclaimer lang, um, this information that I got is basically most of it from online, but most importantly sa mga tao na nakarating na dito sa Canada and they're like Canadian citizen already, okay? So without further ado, again, we're gonna start. So number one, you can be a student here sa Canada, okay? So you can apply as a student visa, as a student and apply for a student permit or student visa to get to study here. I'm just using my notes. Now, mind you, sa Canada, libre ang schooling. Well, most of it, right? Or like, kung meron mo may pautang yung gobyerno. But, as an international student, you have to support your all of your fees. Like, all of your school fees and stuff. So, medyo mahirap, but it's worth it, okay? So, as a student uh, here sa Canada, meron kami tinatawag na placement or on-the-job training. Sometimes bayad, sometimes hindi bayad. But, what's good about it is, if they like you, pwede ka nilang i-hire after your school. Which goes to the second uh, part ng way to get here, which is work permit or work visa. Now, you can apply separately as a, uh, uh, a work permit or like mag ka na or student and then work visa. I have a friend who's already in Alberta. So the, that's what she did. So nag uh, Nagpunta siya sa agency dyan sa Philippines who um, take people from Philippines to Alberta and then they, from there they get hired and then dun na siya nagsettle hanggang sa naging uh, permanent resident na siya. So it's, there's a possibility or kagaya naman ng isang friend ko ngayon na he's a student here sa Barrie, right? Um, and then meron siyang ginagawang placement um, and then I think after ng school niya, pwede na siyang um, pagtrabahuhin doon. Okay? So, those are the two ways. Um, mind you ha, segue ko na to, to, to do those things, mag-apply dito sa Canada, pwede kang mag-go sa agency dyan sa Philippines or any part of the country you are. Um, pwede ka nang, nang mag-hire ng someone to do that for you. Of course, meron silang additional fees, right? Um, yung mga ibang tao kasi they don't want to make mistake. But just so you guys know, pwede mo silang gawin lahat on your own. May mga on um, website ako na isha-share mamaya so you can get more information about it. But you can all do the fill uh, the application, filling out everything, and then you just send it back here to Canada. They get reviewed, and then you guys get the result. So two ways then you can get to an agency or you can do it yourself. Either way, which one float your boat? Good. Okay. So number three, which is um the last one that I'm gonna share on how to get to Canada, is um immigrant or like pwede kayong mag migrate here sa Canada. So skip mo na yung study permit, skip mo na yung work permit mag-migrate ka na. Um, kaya lang, I think you have to be, uh, may profession ka dyan sa Philippines. Uh, pwede kang nurse, pwede kang um, doctor, pwede kang, you know, teacher. Um, yun nga lang, para sa akin, I believe this is gonna be costly. I know people who have done it too, teacher and nurses. Um, they had to show money, sobrang laki, million. But again, kung meron tayong natirang pera, kung meron tayong mga lupa and what not, I think it's all worth it kasi marami namang opportunities dito sa Canada. Nobody said it's gonna be easy at first. Uh, definitely, it's gonna be a lot of hard work. But at the end of the day, kung goal niyo talaga na makarating dito sa Canada, 
I sport. <laughs> now, um, recap lang natin ha. So, una, you can do the student visa. Number two, you can do the work visa. Or number three, just straight up migrate here sa Canada. Okay? So, we're gonna explain more later. I'll show you how it is outside uh, in my home. video if you notice I changed my hair color <laughs> I made a video of it too so you're gonna see it in my channel um going back so that's the second part na tayo ng um information ko in vlogging information stuff um and in this second part I want to explain to you how it is in Canada so it's basically expectation versus you know reality so, simula tayo sa job. So, meron akong pointers dito. So, job, housing, okay, um, healthcare, yung mga benefits, government benefits, um, taxes, okay, and then yung mga necessities mo. So, magsimula tayo sa trabaho. So, of course, you're gonna want to know how it is in Canada. So, ang minimum pay dito, as per the Ontario, Canada, is $14.25 per hour. So, sa isang araw, may 7 hours ka na bayad. Depende na lang sa overtime. Kasi yung overtime dito, time and a half, right? So, kung 14.25 per hour, kapag time and a half mo, and then, you know, it's gonna be... 14.25, siya mindok magaling sa math, divided by 2, it's gonna be 14.25 plus 7 dollars and 12. But, kailangan ka nilang i-allow. Kasi hindi lahat ng, um, you know, um, trabaho, they allow the, the overtime, okay? So, yun nga. So, job here, minimum pay. If you were to work at McDonald's and stuff, it's 14.25 here in Toronto, Ontario. Pangalawa is the housing, okay? So, based on the research that I found, uh, medyo mataas talaga ang cost of living here sa Toronto, right? So, here, kapag ka condo, yung buong condo, it's gonna be 2,582. That's the average so far na charge nila. But, just so you know, merong mga <clears throat> room for rent, merong mga basement apartment. Sa, sa Philippines, wala tayong basement, di ba? Pero dito sa Canada, meron, sila, meron tayong ba basement here. Basement, sorry. <laughs> meron kami basement. So, minsan mas mura yun kasi syempre, di ba? It's not as like, um, mas freedom kung meron kang sariling condo or if you were to actually rent the whole entire house or the whole entire apartment. So, medyo mas mura. Makakita kayo ng 1,100, even lesser. Ako nga nagpaparenta ako for 750 lang, eh, right? So, and that's the whole basement, right? So, there's ways kung hindi ka masyadong ma-arty, okay? And then, <clears throat> next that I'm gonna discuss, sorry, is um, the healthcare benefits, the government benefits, okay? So, marami kaming long list of benefits. But what's good here in Canada is healthcare because we don't pay anything at all. As much as possible, the, the, the government covers everything. So if I want to go to the doctor, walk in lang ako to my family doctor and I don't pay. Okay? I believe ang consultation dito is about $60. Pero we wave siya kasi nga covered ka. Um, meron din kami tinatawag na EI. Ay, hindi ko alam kung ano yung tawag dyan sa Philippines eh. Pero nakonwood na hindi ka makapagtrabaho, the government actually gives you money. And on top of that, as a parent, may child benefits ka. Depende sa income mo. Minsan, 300 per kid. Minsan, 150. De depende, right? Sa, sa income mo. And, did you know na wala kang mag-aalaga sa anak mo, dalhin mo lang siya sa daycare and then covered siya ng gobyerno. But again ha, everything is based on your income. If you're making a little bit more, then less benefits for you. Okay? So now, the taxes. So dun sa 14.25 per hour na sinasabi ko sa inyo as a minimum pay here, hindi lahat yung take home mo. 
what's happening is sa dami ng benefits na binibigay sa amin ng Canada, kinukuha din nila yun sa tax. <clears throat> Funny. Kasi kung kikita ka ng mga, let's say, $2,000 bi-weekly, siguro makukuha mo lang dun mga, ano, mga 18, 17, 16, depende sa kung meron ka pang um, extra insurance or like yung mga kaltas, mga RSP mo. So, it's not gonna be full. So, ka mabigla, okay? Same thing kapag ka bumibili ka dito sa Canada ng damit outside. Oh, kuha ka and then the ticket price is $18 pagdating mo sa counter plus tax. And here in Toronto, that's 13%. So, if it's $18 times 1.13, ang presyo nun is $20.34. So, I just wanna let you know. Okay? And then, I'm gonna go back to the necessities. Again, kasi nga pinapaiksi ko lang. I don't want you guys to like have like a, a, a very long video. Yung mga necessities mo, ano ba yun? Yung groceries, food, clothing, this and what not. A regular average person, kung ikaw lang mag-isa, aram mo, mga 300 bucks, okay? Kung ayaw mo magkotse, gusto mo mag-bus, it's $3.25 here in Canada. But, unlike Philippines, sakay ka sa jeep, baba ka, sakay ka ng bus, bayad ka ulit. Here, may mga connecting fares. So, if I were to go sa mall and kailangan ko ng tatlong lipat, 325 pa din ang binayad ko. Bibigyan ka lang nila ng ticket na nagbayad ka na. It's just like connecting um connecting bus fare. Ka, hindi ka na nila pagbabayarin. So, back and forth, you know, it's gonna be $7.50. Pero, depende yan sa route na take mo ha. Pero, hindi siya kagaya ng Pinas na every time bababa ka sa sakay ka bayad. No. So, that's good. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> in terms of cars, I sell cars here in Canada, right? So, may mga average car ka na makukuha for $300 um, monthly. Okay, depends sa bago or like, um, or pre-owned. Pero, I think average, you can get about $300 on a sedan, okay? And then, yung insurance mo, sabi sa research ko, it's about like, um, I believe mga $200 um, monthly ang average na binabayad depende kung gaano ka kabata depende yung driving history mo sa Philippines, just so you know pag jump mo dito sa Canada um, may test pa rin for you to get your license but if you have your international license uh, kailangan mo lang siyang iparid ribbon dyan tapos pagdating mo dito, take ka na ng exam Kasi kapag ka wala kang red ribbon na uh, the driver's license from Canada uh, from Philippines, you have to take G1 which is the exam. After 8 months, you have to take the G2 which is, you know, side street, magde-drive ka kasama ng examiner and then G Okay, so that's going to be for the full license sa highway ka naman dadalhin. So G1 exam, G2 sa road with the examiner and then G is the highway na full license na like you don't have to like go back and like you know renew ka lang ng renew okay and then fuel mo maybe $200 a month depende sa kotse mo and then again cell phone kailangan mo yung communication especially like sa trabaho mo right $50 most likely may internet pa yan and what not but again I just kind of like want to give you like an example how it is here and then um yeah Honestly, it's it's not that bad. Um, depending na lang yun talaga sa disiplina mo on how you actually handle your finances. So this is our final conclusion, okay? So kanina sinabi ko sa inyo yung minimum, pero I'm gonna explain you yung average income here ng tao uh, residing in Ontario. So, sabi nila, kapag dalawa kayong mag-asawa, household income nyo is about 71,700. Now, that is after taxes. So, take home muna yon. Pero kung ikaw lang ang mag-isa ang pupunta dito sa Canada, it's better kung mag-asawa kayo. I believe pwede kang mag-student. Pagkatapos yung asawa mo, pwede pumasok dito ng work permit. So, si isa nagtatrabaho and then si isa nag-aaral. So, that could be something na you guys could do as well. There's a possibility. But kung ikaw lang mag-isa, if the average is 71,700 divided mo yan by 2, it's gonna be 35,850 a year. If I were to divide that um, monthly, 
$2,987.50. Kaya yan. To be honest with you, kaya ang kaya yan. So, yung gamit lang calculator, ha? <laughs> Para ito magkamali. So, 2987.50 times mo yan sa 37. Ay, social. 1,000, uh, no, ile, oh? 110,537 pesos. Ang <laughs> dami mo na mabibili nito sa Pinas. Pero syempre, may mga kaltas pa yan. Kasi kapag dito ka na nakatira sa Canada, kaya dapat maintindihan din ng ibang tao na kahit nasa ibang bansa ka at kumikita ka ng dolyares, it doesn't mean na mayaman ka na. Kasi may mga expenses ka din ha. So, breakdown ko lang sa inyo. So, 2987 Point fifty minus one thousand one hundred. Kung makakita ka ng apartment or like basement or like condo bachelor yan, okay? Minus three hundred dollars for the food. Minus two hundred dollars for the fuel, okay? Monthly, siguro ganun yung magagastos mo going to work and stuff. Minus mo ngayon yung car. Ngayon, $300 monthly yon. Pwede ka naman bumili ng second hand. Kaya lang kasi, kung wala kang alam sa paggawa ng car and you're kind of like new to Canada, transportation here, coach here is not a want. It's a necessity. You can actually make more money if you have a car, just so you know. Kasi you have more time na pumunta sa ibang ibang job mo, right? kaysa mag-intay ka ng bus kasi hindi ka gaya dito sa Philippines na paglabas mo ng kanto, may tricycle, may may bus, may jeep. Dito hindi. Sometimes, when I was like, taking the bus, I wait like 30, 45, minsan an hour just waiting for my um, bus. Sayang yung oras ko. Kumita na sana ako ng pair, right? Okay? And then, minus 200. Um, mandatory dito na meron kang insurance. So, like I said, mga $200 siguro yon monthly. Minus cellphone mo, ha? Kailangan yan. Wala pa yung internet mo para makausap mo yung family mo. So, that alone, sa so $2,987.50, ang tira ko lang dyan is $837.50. Magpapadala ka pa kay Inay, magpapadala ka pa kay Itay sa mga anak mo and what not. Wala nang natira sa'yo. And on top of that, hindi naman yun lang yung gagastusin mo eh. Marami ka pa rin. Paano yung clothes mo? Paano yung mga iba mo pang needs? Paano yung emergency stuff? So, like again, um... This card lang, that's why I've seen a lot of people here, two jobs, three jobs. Basta kaya nila para sa pamilya ginagawa nila. So, I hope this video kind of like show you how it is here in Canada. E kung mapapansin nyo, hindi ako nag, ano, <clears throat> hindi ako nag uh, mention about like you buying a house. Kasi if you were to get here, hindi ka ora-orada makakabili ng bahay. Kailangan mo siyang pag-ipunan. And that's another topic siguro na I should go for my another video. But if you guys are curious, oh, how much is the house is there in Canada, Cheryl? If it's sa Toronto, oh my gosh. I believe ang presyo ng bahay ngayon, if you were to like actually buy it, yung detach ay wala ang katabi, 1.2 million average. And kung tatanungin mo kung magkano yun sa Philippines, oh my God, 44, bah, 44, na, 44 million 400,000. It's crazy, right? So, again, I hope this video, uh, this video helps you guys kung nagdi-decide kayo na pumunta dito sa Canada. And if you know anyone who wants to come in here and have an idea, well, share this video. Again, hope you guys could like, subscribe, and share. Bye. Thank you.